Somebody needs to chill. You have the Four of Swords with the Page of Swords. Whomever is on this side of the equation needs to chill the fuck out and sit the fuck down. Stop questioning. Because what I'm getting from this energy, from this Page of Swords energy, it's not like you're questioning or you're being inquisitive or you're you're forcefully continuing this conversation or this argument just to understand, to really come to an understanding of what someone else feels. This person is in this energy just to prove that they're right. Everybody. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading. Yes, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, um, this is a fairly timeless reading, yeah? So please take what, uh, uh, so whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you at that moment. Yes? All right, guys. Um, I don't, uh, happy Friday. I don't really have anything to say. Um, I have nothing really to start with. Um, I'm busy working on the monthly readings for September um, and some other things that I'm looking to bring online in September, so that's great. Um, but I felt called to bring forward a message for the collective today. Um, specifically, I would have probably chosen to skip it just so that because like, I'm trying to keep my focus together for you know the monthly readings but I'm feeling called feeling guided to do morning coffee specifically for today and I really feel like actually all morning I've been remembering my my spirit has been reminding me of the fact that I used to do a weekend edition so uh, there's something about uh, needing to do a reading today that is meant for this weekend for whoever whomever is meant to find it All right, even though this is still a timeless reading like you could find this at any time and it could still resonate you But there's still something specific about this weekend That I'm wanting to pull cards for or I'm being guided to pull cards for or I'm needing to pull cards for so that's what we're gonna do That's really why I'm doing this right now. Yeah, excellent. So we're gonna get into this um, I'm using the uh, Tarot Mucha deck, yes. And then um, I don't have my Los Ganabeo deck, so I'll have to use another one for clarification because that one's in the car. And of course, we'll cross the Oracle Bridge when we get there. Yes? Excellent. All right, kids, let's get into this and see what we've got going on for this moment. Yeah, here we go. My spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So um, what I am feeling for the collective, what I just picked up on, I'm going to give this five shuffles. This is one. Uh, so the color for the collective right now is green. Okay? Heart chakra awareness, heart-centered situations. This is two. What I'm picking up here is... Oh, okay, I'm just hearing heart-centered awareness. Um, so there could be, this is three, there could be that there may be some things that are coming up or things that are resurfacing that you're needing to get a better, what I just heard was you need to get a better vantage point on, you need to get a better view on, on you're trying to get a better view on, or you'd have a different point of view. Maybe you do have a different point of view right now or a different way of looking at something and so that's why it's coming up. But what I heard specifically was... There are things coming up that you need to get a better vantage point on. That's the, that's the phrase. That's what I heard. You need to get a better vantage point on this. This is four. Four of 
for the collective. This is a five. I'm not really getting too much preliminarily. And so I'm not wanting to grasp at, spra at straws. So let's just get the cards here flowing. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking into this. I'm trying to get a little bit more. And really all I'm hearing is hearts, heart centered awareness, heart chakra. I mean, it's not necessarily that you're, you're doing any sort of heart chakra work, like cleansing, clearing, clearing, or healing in your heart chakra. It's, it's about an understanding that requires compassion. And this is why you're needing a, a different vantage point or a different point of view here in order to view whatever situations you are being faced with right now. Um, there is a level of compassion that's needed to see this, to truly see this for what it is or to see this clearly, okay? Again, Spirit keeps saying a vantage point. You need a better point of view. You need a better vantage point. For some of us here, this is translating into needing to step away from the common narrative or needing to, I'm, I'm getting, I'm picking up on a group of people. So a collective mindset or maybe a group of friends, uh, a society, a community. There is, a, there, there is, for some, for some of you here, or maybe this is for whomever this message is for, I am, I am seeing a group of people. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's anybody specifically, okay? Um, it could just, this, this literally, spirit could be showing me a group of people just to represent a uh, collective way of thinking or a collective mindset. Whether this is like an institutionalized collective mindset or it's just like some like a pocket of society or your close friends or something like that i'm not seeing people any type of person specifically i'm just seeing a collective of people that is translating into a a, a group mindset somehow uh, a three of cups type of energy maybe um a, a hive mind something that is generally generally accepted as a um, as an acceptable belief system or an approved of belief system or way of thinking or way of seeing something, way of relating to something. But you specifically with this heart chakra, now the heart, now the color is going back down to your, to yellow. Okay. Um, and we've been talking about this for the collective. Uh, I've been seeing yellow a lot for individuals in the collective, whether I'm channeling for the collective, like doing this morning coffee type of situation, or whether I'm doing a private reading for someone, I've been seeing yellow everywhere for people. And it's all about uh, changing your approach, changing the way you use your willpower, changing the way that you, I mean, that even came out in happy hour uh, this week link at the top right of your screen. One of the messages of happy hour was um, our egos and our egoic drive and the things as a, as a human collective, the things that we work for, the things that we strive for, the ideals that we align with, it's all coming into question at this time in our lives, in human history. Um, in societal history. So that's a big collective message for us anyway with this yellow color. But for this, for the purpose of this reading, the focus is on the heart chakra. And there needs to, what I'm hearing is you need to come to a compassionate understanding. And this, this requires you to let go of these, the, the strong over emphasis of pure logic and, 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 and lack of emotion and start to align with a balance between your left brain and your right brain. Okay, this is a good, actually, this is a good time to talk about this. So um, I have been, um, I, I've recently connected with someone that goes by the name of Sam the Illusionist. He is here on YouTube. He's a channeler. He's really awesome. I really love the content that he brings through. I highly recommend if you guys are interested in it, you check him out. Um, he channels the Pleiadians, the Syrians, Arcturans, the Galactic Federation, Archangel Michael, Ra, the Buddha. Um, you know, he, he channels all of these ascended masters and angels and um, higher dimensional beings that are 
working with humanity, help trying to help humanity as we go through this ascension process, right? And the planet, like Mother Gaia herself. Um, but there was a, a message that he, Sam the Illusionist, had channeled from, he was channeling Archangel Michael. And Archangel Michael, was it Archangel Michael or was it the Galactic Federation? Actually, I think it was the Galactic Federation. Yes, it was the Galactic Federation because it was talking about um, a recent, uh, a recent uh, uh, alignment or vibration check of the planet to see where humanity was in terms of like this whole ascension process um, and basically got us like a bit of a percentage of who's aligning where, people aligning with the path of uh, service to self, people aligning with the path of service to God, and then people aligning with the path of service to self. I'm sorry, the people aligning with the path of service to others, people aligning with the path of service to God, and then people aligning with the path of service to self. And the Galactic Federation is a collective of um, uh, intelligent beings, intelligent life forms that are higher in dimension than where humanity is right now. And it's planets from all over the galaxy. Um, and they've all come together with a common goal of helping, helping anyone and everyone out there in existence, right? Okay, that's like a really like basic, awful description. If you're really interested in the Galactic Federation of Planets, go ahead and check it out. Like, check out Sam the Illusionist, but do some research. You know, there are tons of channelers and individuals. Gigi Young talks about it, okay? So like, it's out there, the information's out there. I'm not doing a really good job at explaining it. But anyway, in this video that, or this channeled message that Sam the Illusionist put out in which he was channeling the Galactic Federation, uh, they were talking about this alignment check and they were talking about what is really going to allow any being, any conscious living being to ascend or to reach higher states of awareness and higher dimensional realities, what will help them and what will hinder them. And the biggest hindrance for society right now is, or at least for human society at this current day and age, is our overemphasis on left brain thinking. What is left brain thinking? Left brain is thinking with your, is, is your intelligence, is, well, yes, is your intellectual side is your straight intelligence, is your analytical side of your mind, okay? And it's not easy, or I'm sorry, it's not hard to recognize or to realize how humanity is stuck completely on straight logic and facts, and that's the only thing that's taken into consideration. The ironic thing about that is there's so much dis or misinformation that's going out there around, and so much, and there's so much control over the narrative and over the facts and over what it is we are what what it is we are told what it is we're allowed to hear what it is we're allowed to believe like we are all so manipulated right now as a society human society is so heavily manipulated we think we're getting all the facts it's not even close okay there is so much that's being hidden from us so like we're so we're so left brain dominant and yet that that is actually a flaw that is used against us but that's a whole topic for another story uh for another time um the the point here is that societally we have an issue where we are completely logic based and we let all create all of the right brain right brain process which is your creativity your intuition your spiritual connection like and all that stuff that is completely pushed out the window pushed out the door so we're if so what and what we need as as in, as beings to ascend to reach these higher uh, levels of awareness, higher levels of consciousness, higher dimensions is we need to balance this left brain light right brain energy. But to be honest with you, you really need to have a little bit more of a higher percentage of right brain activity than left brain in or, or intellectual. You need a little bit more of that creative. Um, um, intuitive, emotional energy uh, than just your intellectual. Because once you reach higher, like once you start reaching higher dimensions, like past the fifth dimension, that's when logic completely starts going out the window. Logic and, and reason and, or at least the way we understand it as humans, right? You're not going to be able to get higher and higher and higher on, on just intellect alone. 
on just straight logic alone. Because the higher you go in dimensional realities, the less logical sense it all makes. Okay? So what I'm picking up for the collective right now, or at least this message for the collective right now, is all about learning how to bring more compassion and understanding, or what I heard specifically was compassionate, compassionate understanding into your life, into your process. That balance between the right brain and the left brain, okay? But having a little more dominance on that right brain so that you are you are you're open you're open to the possibilities you're open to interpretation you're open to intuition you're open to what your emotions are telling you or what the emotions of someone else is telling you open to all that instead of just completely outright or downright rejecting anything that it does not have purely 100 percent um logical or or um intellectual basis okay cool so, what's going on? What, what, what do you want to say for the collective? What else do you want to say for the collective, please, Spirit, in terms of this energy? Seven of Swords is the first card out. Wow. Um, you know what's so funny here? I... We've been talking about a lot of what's been going on in society here on the channel lately. And someone even mentioned they were wondering if, they, someone left a comment recently saying they wondered if um, I got messages on current events. Um, and then I started talking about it, like I started bringing those messages forward. And part of me is, like I'm very much wa walking, uh, uh, consciously trying to align myself with this path of service to God's source creator, right? Which means that I'm, I'm opening myself up as a channel, as a vessel for whatever messages God, Source, Creator wants to bring forward to the collective. I'm an open conduit to that. But part of me has been kind of like, hey, um, Source, can we stop talking about this, like, you know, uh, what's go what this, like, this stuff, this controversial stuff here? Because, like, I don't want to be ostracized. Like, eh, I don't know if I like this, but Source is kind of like, Eric, we need to talk about this. It needs to be said. We need some voices out here that are speaking to another narrative just than what's in the mainstream. <sighs> okay, but so the reason I say that is because it feels like this is coming up right here, right now. So take this as it resonates. Um, this could fit in any way, shape, or form in your life. But there is a level of deception here that's going on. You have the Seven of Swords, and then you have that with the Lovers. And then the overall energy here is Strength. Um, so what this is saying to me, what this feels like here is someone's deceiving you or something or someone is trying to deceive you into saying that you don't actually have a choice. Obviously, just that sentence alone, you can obviously, um, apply that to what's going on in the current events, right? But it doesn't have to necessarily be that way because this could be talking about the, the grand scale collective or this could be talking about your life specifically, intimately, individually, okay? So outside of, you know, current events, this could be a situation in which either you are being coerced or someone's trying to coerce you into something or trying to make you feel like you don't have a choice. Or you need to be the one to understand that ultimately it is someone else's life and they can choose for themselves. Okay? There is something here in this situation for you or for whomever is resonating with this collective reading right now that is egoically, it's your ego or it's an egoic point of view, an egoic mindset or something, an, e an egoic position that is causing someone to believe or be forced into believing that they don't have a choice. Seven of Swords and the Lovers. Let's, let's go further. Uh, a little bit more, please, Spirit. What's going on with this? Okay. Oh. Okay, we have 
we have the Eight of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Immediately, the Eight of Wands is talking about communication, needing to communicate. There is a need for communication here. Ah, and this is where we get into the left brain, right brain activity or topic. <sighs> okay. Um, this is where we get into the left brain, right brain topic. Because there is a lack of compassion in this situation for whomever this is resonating for. There is a lack of compassion. And what I'm getting with the Eight of Wands being at the bottom of the deck, uh, the Eight of Wands, yes, what I'm getting with the Eight of Wands at the bottom of the deck is that there needs to be a, com a conversation, but not just a conversation where someone who, who is strict, who's of a strictly intellectual mind that feels like they have some sort of level of authority or some level of expertise, and they may have a level of expertise, okay? That, but the problem here, no one is trying to say that you don't have this expertise if you have a, some sort of official accreditation or something like that. Like, that's not the point. That's not what matters here, okay? Yes, and yes, your, your studies have not gone in vain, but what you need to understand is that there are more points of view other than just what you've studied or what it is you've, uh, uh, what it is you've experienced. And this doesn't even have to be anything crazy other than the fact that one person has had a certain experience that has shaped their reality and shaped their lives for them, and another person has another experience or another point of view that has shaped their lives. The point here is that instead of standing here and fighting each other and saying you're right or, or I'm right, you're wrong, this, that, and the third, there needs to be a level of open communication that allows individuals to feel like they are seen and they are heard. But the, ba the, the, the main point of, like, I literally feel, and this is so funny because this has been showing up in my life specifically, although this, is, this specifically isn't happening for me right now. But I did kind of face this a little bit over the last few days with a close friend. But it feels like here someone is taking pure facts or pure um, statistics or pure logic over emotion, over intuition, over feeling. Like you could have all the intelligence in the world to explain as to why you feel a certain way or why you think a certain thing should be happening. But your intelligence, your straight, strict intelligence or your strict uh, um, logic-based thinking has nothing to do or means nothing when someone else's intuition or their body or everything within them is telling you, is saying to that individual, no, I'm not doing this. No, I'm not going down this path. You can obviously apply this to what's going on in the collective scheme right now, right? But to take it out of the, uh, to, 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 not, to not open that can of worms, let's say somebody is telling you that in order for you to be successful, you have to, you have to go to a four-year university and then you have to get your master's degree. But then deep within you, there is a part of you that's telling you, no, that's not right for me. That's not the path that I need to go down. <laughs> this actually might be literally the conversation somebody's having because now I've heard I, that would literally be the death of me. If I were to go down the path that you on a, on a logic level, okay, are telling me I, ha I need to go down because that's the way I'm going to be successful. Just you telling me that makes me feel like everything within me is going to wither away. But then you have this other person that's standing here saying, what are you talking about? The logic is there or the proof is there. You know, you, if, you want, if you want to be successful, then you have to get this accreditation or you have to go to school or you have to do this, that, and the third. It's like, but then your intuition is saying, don't listen to them because that's not the path I need to go down. Just because you, you could have all of the facts and the logic in the world, but that still is not going to be 
able to hold a candle to or that is still going to be trumped by someone else's intuition that tells them something is not right for them specifically. That's the point of this conversation. That's the point of this message. Take it as it resonates. Apply it to however, apply it to your life however, okay? Now, to further clarify this situation, like I said, you have the Eight of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Somebody, there needs to be some sort of conversation in which all parties are open to open to, to clear communication with each other. You have that, you have furthering the story, you have the Four of Swords, the Page of Swords. Oh, oh. Okay, you have two sides of the equation. You have the Four of Swords with the Page of Swords on one side. And then you have the Seven of Pentacles and the Hermit on the other. Listen here. Listen here. Please. Please listen. Like I said before, you could have all of the logical, all of the facts that you want. Okay? That is never going to change someone else's experience and the conclusions that they've come to for themselves and for their lives in relation to the experiences that they've had. Your, your facts really mean nothing here when it comes to someone having a clear understanding of what is right for them and what is not right for them. Period. Somebody needs to chill. You have the Four of Swords with the Page of Swords. Whomever is on this side of the equation needs to chill the fuck out and sit the fuck down. Stop questioning. Because what I'm getting from this energy, from this page of swords energy, it's not like you're questioning or you're being inquisitive or you're, you're forcefully continuing this conversation or this argument just to understand, to really come to an understanding of what someone else feels. This person is in this energy just to prove that they're right or just to prove that the work that they've done trumps or overshadows what this person's intuition is telling them or the, 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 the accreditation or the mastery that they've done or the straight facts or the straight logic that they're putting forward. At this point, this individual is not helping. You're only trying to make it worse because they, now their ego is triggered and now they're trying to prove someone else wrong because they feel like they're being told that they're wrong. But here's the thing. You're not necessarily wrong. I mean, you've got the facts. You're not necessarily wrong. But neither is this other person because this other person has had some experiences. Seven of Pentacles and the Hermit. They've had some experiences in which they understand who it is they truly are in relation to whatever this situation is. They've experienced certain things. They've harvested and they've come to an understanding of what it is they actually want. In, ver uh, uh, in relation to this situation. And they're gonna do, they're gonna go about their business. They're gonna do what's best for them because they have an understanding of what works for them and what doesn't, what's right for them or what's not, what their intuition is telling them to, to go after and what, they're what it's telling them to not go after. Your facts, your facts have nothing to do with this. The Hermit and the Seven of Pentacles. Because your facts here, your facts are missing the level of compassion and understanding that is necessary to really understand what this choice is that this person is making. Whoa. Okay. I kind of want to give an example. Um, school didn't really, was not a good thing for me. I did not really do well in school. 
in the, at, at least in the traditional education system. Okay, I didn't do, I did not do well. A lot of that had to do with um, uh, dietary issues because I am gluten and corn intolerant, and I was eating a lot of that as a kid because we didn't know, and that was heavily screwing with my emotions and my, my, my mental stability and all that kind of stuff, right? Plus also like growing up, you know, being a kid, like there was a lot of instability. But the traditional school system did not work for me. And I found earlier or later in life that I learned much better at my own pace when I can, when I can do it myself, when I'm not sitting there in a classroom or what, like, like that, that, that system just did not work for me. But I grew up. We all grew up hearing you got to finish school and you got to go to college. I didn't go to college. And had I had gone to college at that time, I, it would have been a complete waste because I would not have been able to handle it. I would not have been able to, to really do it well enough to really have it make uh, an impact on my future. But there's this logical point of view that says, no, this is the system that's in place. This is this is this is the, t the statistics say that this is the most ideal situation. So everybody's got to do it. Didn't work for me. Your logic was wrong when it came to me and many others. This is not a one size fits all situation. And that's where compassion and intuition comes in. And creativity comes in because straight facts or straight logic is completely missing all of that. You're missing the nuance of life. You're missing the specific characteristics of individuals. We're called individuals for a reason. Yes, we're all one part of, of, of part of one big energetic collective, but in this reality, we are individuals with individual uh, 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 um, proclivities and perceptions and personalities. Granted, you don't really lose that personality as you continue going up the, uh, the dimensional matter, the ladder, but that's, that's another topic for another time. You can't really, you can't effectively get through life in the best way possible on straight facts and straight logic alone. You can't. Because you're going to alienate people. Because you're going to set yourself away from people. You're going to alienate yourself. This is an interesting message. Um, okay, let's move to <laughs> let's move to some clarity here. I'm gonna use the golden art nouveau tarot, yeah? Five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All right. So let's start with the Page of Swords and the Four of Swords. Yeah, this individual that, quite frankly, needs to chill. <laughs> Page of Swords, Four of Swords. Some clarity, please, Spirit. Clarity on this side of the equation, page of swords, four of swords. Yeah, see? Don't. Oh, well, shit. Page of swords, four of swords. All right. You got, this side of the equation got one card and one card only. It's the fool in reverse. And you know what's so funny? You know what is so ironic about that? This individual is, is approaching life or approaching a situation from a strictly fact, logical, or maybe even just a strictly science-based point of view, which I find completely hilarious because like if it weren't for spirit, there would be no science to study. And yet, because there is no proof or you, because we don't have the technology to prove any of this officially just yet to like literally pull it up and show it to someone's face. Like, see, it does exist. It's completely rejected in a lot of cases, right? And so this person or this side of the situation got the fool in reverse, which is funny, which is hilarious because 
by their definition, you don't, who would, who would want to be a fool? I base my, I base my point of view or my opinion on pure logic or on straight facts because I don't want to look like a fool. And I don't want you to look like a fool either. Joke's on you. Because the more you deny the reality of intuition, of spirit, of emotional reality and the necessity of that, the more foolish you end up looking. The more heartless and insensitive you end up looking. The more like a robot you end up looking. Isn't that ironic? At the bottom of the deck, you have justice on that side. Which is funny. Bear with me. I'm trying to under really trying to understand what justice is trying to say here. Justice is going to be served. But what I'm feeling like it's saying is you have justice, the knight of wands, the ten of pentacles and the hermit and the high priestess. What I feel like here is justice is going to serve on um, uh, justice is going to be served. And there is going to be a level of justice that's going to come in in terms of whomever is passionately moving forward. The Knight of Wands, um, some sort of light bearer, the light worker. The Knight of Wands is my light worker card. This right here. Knight of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, uh, the Hermit again, and the High Priestess. I feel like there's some sort of justice that's going to be coming through on that side of the equation in terms of understanding or in terms of somebody understanding who they are and what they need as an individual on an individual basis okay this is not one size fits all there's going to be some sort of justice this individual that does not want to take a leap of faith and does not want to try anything new doesn't want to look foolish justice is going to be served somehow and what it feels like here is they're either going to be eating their words or they're going to have to bite their tongue or it just feels like some, it just feels like this heavy influence or this heavy focus on just pure logical facts is going to come, is going to end up biting them in the ass somehow. Uh, I don't know. I really, that's, that's what I'm feeling here. It does, it, it doesn't feel specific. It's just like. What I want to say is you're going to eat your words at some point. But that takes us back to what I was saying before about how our society is so factual and logic based. And it's that very thing that is being used against us to manipulate us. But if you were connected to your own sense of intuition and source and understanding, if you were connected to yourself and you were connecting so that you got the information that you needed for you to survive, to, to, to provide, to live, to thrive, whatnot, whatever, that misinformation campaign, that manipulation of the facts and that, that, that manipulation of what it is we actually have access to and what it is we're not told wouldn't affect you. So let's look at this side of the equation then. The Hermit with the Seven of Pentacles. And what this is saying to me here is like, uh, and not this person on this side of the equation that's more, that has a connection with their intuition and their sense of self and what's right for them and what's not right for them. It doesn't mean that they don't think, they don't take hold of the facts either. They don't consider the facts either. But the facts and the lot, uh, but the facts, quote unquote, don't rule them. They still have a sense of self, a sense of intuition, a sense of connection to the creativity and the unknown that they're willing to vibe with. But they got to this point because they've had experiences, Seven of Pentacles, that taught them certain lessons that helped them get connected to this hermit, to this sense of truth of self. This connection to the divine, this connection to spirit, this connection to source that is all sustaining that everybody has access to, but not everybody is ready to accept yet. And that's fine. But the person on the other, or the energies on the other side of the equation are lacking the compassion and understanding to accept that. And that is what's needed here. So let's clarify the seven of pentacles and the hermit. What's the seven of pentacles and the hermit? Please do it.
The Hierophant is at the bottom of the deck. This is really interesting, you guys. <laughs> so uh, what's come out here? We have the lovers again. The lovers has come out in reverse and it fell on this side of the equation. The page of swords, the four of swords clarified by the fool in reverse. So what this is saying here, we have uh, the lovers in reverse, which is represent, and it fell over on this side of the equation, which is saying to you that you don't have a choice. What else has come out here is the six of swords which has fallen sideways, crossing in between this Page of Swords, Four of Swords side of the equation and the Hermit and the Seven of Pentacles side of the equation. And what has come out on the Hermit and Seven of Pentacles is death, which is ironic, again, because this individual over here is going to look at you and say, see, death came out on your side. You're going to die. You're right. I am going to die. First and foremost, we're all going to die someday. But death does not represent the death that you logically only want to accept. Because death also represents a transformation of one form of a being to another form of being. And no, that means that doesn't mean that your physical body has to has to kick the bucket in order for that transformation to happen. And what I'm getting from this, you guys, especially with this Six of Swords energy and the Hierophant and the Seven of Wands and the Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck, what it feels like here is this person or whomever is on this side of the equation, uh, the Hermit and the Seven of Pentacles, is making a conscious decision to leave this, uh, this tyranny behind. The Hermit. Not, I'm sorry. Well, yes, the Hermit. Because they have an awareness of sense itself, but that's the Hierophant. <laughs> but we have the Hierophant, which is representative of a, a form of tyranny right now, with the Seven of Wands, which is defenses, keeping your boundaries, saying no, holding your ground, Ace of Swords, because you have an understanding, an awareness, a wisdom that these other people or whomever is telling you you don't have a choice is not connected to. But that's fine. You don't even need to fight about it. And I really don't feel like you are fighting about it. Because you see, what we have here is an awareness, Ace of Swords, of the heartbreak and the pain that tyrannical energies have put upon us. Now we have the Emperor, which is so funny because when I first called the Hierophant a, a, a tyrant, I was like, wow, that actually, in the back of my mind, I was like, mm. I mean, yes, this makes sense, but that's also an Emperor energy. Oh, look at what we have here. We have a big old tyranny sandwich. The, 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 the emperor, excuse me, and the hierophant. And they have ridden around. See, see, this is the thing. This is the manipulation tactic. The six of wands. And what, this is really sinister, you guys. This is really sinister because somebody has been rolling around, walking around here with their, with their nose up in the air, looking at, it, looking at other people like they're beneath them. Six of wands, keeping up this appearance like they, they, they're like this big wig. They know everything. They've got all of it. But really what they're doing is selling fear. Five of pentacles. They would rather keep you fearful than allow you to have your own connection to source. Now, it doesn't have to be this sinister. Some of this could be an innocent, uh, coming from a place of somewhat innocence, fairly innocent. But there's still a level of tyranny here. They would rather keep you, they would rather be up on their high horse 
telling you how great they are, trying to convince you of how great they are and how much you need them. Five of Pentacles. They want to keep you in this lack mentality state. So that either they can stay in control or their intellectual uh, proclivity is continued to be validated and justified. Whomever is driving this crusade of the Page of Swords and Four of Swords energy, whoever needs to like sit down and shut the fuck up for a hot, hot, for a hot second is afraid of the unknown potential that is intuition emotion, spirit, anything other than logic. And that's not necessarily anything, that's not, that's not something to shame something, someone for because they would have had their own experiences that got them to be like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Okay, and that's fine. But that doesn't mean that you can now go around and, and control other people's lives just because that's your point of view, period, period. Because there's more to it than you're willing to accept or there's more to it than this side of the equation is willing to accept. And that is not your problem, nor should it be. That does not give somebody a right to tell you you have no choice. They may not have a choice in their lives because that's their point of view. That's the belief that they hold. But that is not you. Period. There, and, there, and there is no logical way that you can, you can continue to try and change that or spin this to make it any different. There, there is no logical way to make that any different. Let's close out this reading. I mean, I could get all woo-woo with this and talk about how this is really just, this is most likely an effect of, you know, dark entities that are trying to control and this and manipulate this, that, and the third. We don't have to get into that. We don't have to get into that. Because that really, I mean, like, yes, that's an element to it. And yes, logically speaking, it would be very important, very helpful for you to understand that. So either you being in this hermit phase or you being in this page of swords needing to chill out phase would help you to understand things. But again, we don't have the technology to prove that right now. So that's just, no, that's not based in logic. That's not based in facts. All right. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I want to get closing Oracle guidance here and I'm feeling called to use the, actually, no. No, 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 no. We were going to go with the Lightworker Oracle deck, but as when I pulled that out, I saw another deck that was behind there that I have not used in ages. We're going to use the Secret Language of Light as our closing Oracle Guidance today. Huh? And you know what's so funny? I just opened the box, and sometimes, you know, when you open these boxes, it creates suction, right? Um... And so one of the cards came, sometimes some of the cards will cut, like the top card will come out. And the top card that, that kind of almost flipped over was card number 43, Enlightenment, which boils down to the seven. I'm not going to take that one just because I want to shuffle and get like, and let a, let a card fall out. But I just thought that was really good. Enlightenment. This is a moment of enlightenment. Yeah. I'm going to give this four more shuffles. Yeah. This is one. Two, three, and four. All right, closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. Closing oracle guidance for this collective message. There it is. You guys. Card number 15, sensitivity. 
Y'all, I don't even know, like, how did we get to, like, almost an hour here? Holy shit. I'm sorry. Whatever. Sensitivity. God bless. Look at this shit, you guys. You can't make this stuff up. Sensitivity. And then the, the sub-caption here for this card is heightened intuition and compassion. You can't make this up. Look at that. I'm not lying to you. You see, I'm not lying to you. Okay? And y'all saw, y'all watched me pull these cards. Like, I, who the hell am I kidding? If you're sitting here watching me, y'all know. Y'all know. I don't got to prove nothing. That, fuck it. Moving forward. <laughs> here you go. You are becoming more sensitive to the energy and vibrations that precede all physical creation. We can all sense these energies, but our rational minds often override our feelings. Good God, man. Sense beyond what you see with your eyes and hear in your mind. Trust your heart will bring together the most up-to-date information through your senses. When we are open to sensing and feeling love, it also means we are open to sensing and feeling fear. This clarifies the importance of actively choosing where you place your gaze and focus your energy. Don't let old stories determine what you will think and feel. There is no hiding behind words. Let me say that again. There is no hiding behind words. Feeling sorry for another or situation doesn't help them or you. It takes you to a place where you can't hear any solutions and feeds back what they already know. You came here to create reality, not to accept it. You attract what you are, not what you think or what you say, but what you feel. Celebrate your sensitivity. Without it, you may not realize you... Celebrate your sensitivity, because without it, you may not realize you have a choice. What do you want to bring into your life? I want to say that one more time. Celebrate your sensitivity. Without it, you may not realize you have a choice. I want to read this last part, inspired reflections and actions. Imagine you are surrounded by a loving, colored light of your choosing. Allow this light to embrace and lift you to a space of love away from fear. Your light will be with you for as long as you need it. Also, check in with your gut and ask whether the energies you are taking on are helping or hindering. Then place your hands on your heart and ask yourself, quote, what energies am I sending out? Is my heart singing or shrinking? End quote. Last part. What have your difficult experiences inspired you to create? How can you help yourself and others move forward in an empowered way? Write down as many things as you can think of. And finally, there's journal work here. Write down three beliefs that help you create your dreams and three beliefs that hinder your dreams. Focus on the ones that make your heart sing. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I swear to God, y'all, I did not expect us to be here 53 minutes later. Like, I thought this was going to be a short little thing because I didn't really have an agenda to start with. Damn near an hour later and here we still are. <laughs> I love you guys so much. And if you're still here watching the video, thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys and I hope you have a fantastic day and a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>